That's better. <sighs> okay, you ready? I'm ready. You can see me? I can see you. Hey. Welcome, we're back Hello. to episode two. We do have a ring light in here, so hopefully that is better lighting. The first one, the lighting was really bad and we had no idea until it came time to upload it. So I was like, yeah, I can't redo that whole video. There's no way we would remember everything and it wouldn't no. be authentic. So. It was a really good one too, so I would say. We don't have dinner because we had a late lunch. And like I said, we will make this work. We're going to make it work with our lifestyle. So we got <laughs> we're snacks. Gonna, we're going to improvise here. And I'm going to try not to crinkle too much in the microphone. But I, I just grabbed like two oatmeal cream pies. Just, you know, healthy snacks. I've been obsessed with toast with cream cheese and this new seasoning. And it's literally called Everything Bagel Seasoning. So you can make like your own like seasoned bagels. Yeah, yeah. But you can do it on bread that you can have. Yeah. Which is nice. So this episode is basically going to be a Hollow Bleed recap for Hollow Bleed 5 2024. Yeah. And then maybe we'll do a little dog update at the end and just kind of like what's going on in our life. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Mmm. It's so good. You don't know what you're missing. I feel like I'll probably drink more than I'll eat. You should tell them what you made to drink. Oh, okay. So my little concoction here, I don't know why y'all can see that, but it is a half a shot of peach schnapps, a half a shot of mango vodka, one whole can of zero sugar sunkissed, and then I just kind of poured in zero sugar coffee creamer until like I got the like the shade that looked like it was going to be good. Gave it a taste test and it's like cream sickle. So really good. And uh, you know, those two shots will give it a little bit of a kick. It's like cream sickle, but there's something different about it. I think it's a mango. Probably. Yeah. I think that makes sense. It's like a subtle version of cream sickle. Yeah, but it's pretty good. Mine's just Coke and vodka, but it's vanilla vodka, which is my favorite kind to put in Coke. And then you put a little bit of vanilla syrup in there, didn't you? Always. <sighs> so, Hollow Bleed 5. It was our first our, Hollow Bleed. Our first time going. Down in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. I know we were, uh, we had talked about going in the past. I know last year really kind of had my attention because it was what, Twisted and ABK were there. Mm -hmm. But we were also already planning on going to Hollow Wicked, so. And Fright Fest. And Fright Fest. So this year we kind of made the decision not to go to Hollow Wicked. Yeah. Because if you're going to Hollow Wicked, okay, you got to go to Fright Fest. Right. And if you're going to Fright Fest and Hollow Wicked, you got to go to Unity Fest. And if you're already going to be up there for Unity Fest, <laughs> and you're already going to be up there for three days, four days, four nights, whatever, right. you might as well make it a whole week. And you might as well go do something in Detroit or something there. Right. Like a museum or something, right? It costs a lot to do that. That's the thing. We did that last year. And it was an amazing vacation. I had so much fun with you. Loved it. But in reality, with our finances right now, it was either Hollow Wicked and nothing else for the rest of the year and into next year, you know, a, a year from now. Yeah. Not like a year as in December. Right. Like a year in a wheel. And, or we skip Hollow Wicked this year and then we could go do some other stuff. And that would include like Axmas, Hollow Bleed. We were wanting to go to the Fear Factory and Twisted show. Like, we talked about several different avenues. And we would like to save up for Tom Woods' float. That's not set in stone. Obviously, we want to see the lineup right. before we commit. But I would really love to scratch that one off our yeah. list next year for sure. So we just ultimately decided with, like, personal stuff going on and finances that it would just be better to just skip Hollow Wicked this year. And 
go do other things. And the other thing would be Hollow Wicked. Or, I'm sorry, Hollow Bleed. <laughs> and that might happen a few times. Yeah. And we, we went down, so we went down Friday. Yes. And we checked into our hotel and got our dog settled. And then we went over to, to Spirit Halloween. Goodwill first. We went to Goodwill, Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween. I had to explain to DC what the Goodwill bins were and why we were not going to go there. Yeah, because they had a Goodwill outlet store. And I was like, oh, this is different. And it like showed the pictures with the big blue bins. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, that's different. We should go there. No and thanks. She, <laughs> and she said that, what was what did you call that? Foot and mouth disease? <laughs> I just that? never heard that. I've heard of it, but... Um, yeah, you ever see like, it's really like people wiping down shopping carts? Yeah. Is it for their baby in? Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So the baby touched that and they touched her feet and they touched her mouth. Yeah. But I guess my I guess where I'm confused is how would you get that from digging through bins at Goodwill? Because when we go, we always sanitize afterwards anyway. Because how many people are digging through those bins? Uh, again, though, we always sanitize. The items in those bins. Yeah. Didn't come from one store. Right. They have it at a store. Doesn't sell. Get shipped to the next store. Yeah. Doesn't sell. Get shipped to the next store. Doesn't sell. I mean, it's a whole process. So a lot of people avoid the Goodwill bins because the sheer amount of people alone who have touched this item is just like so much more than just going into the store. Mm. I mean, it's been through probably like 10 Goodwills before it makes it down to the bins. It goes through the whole Indiana and Michigan area. I guess for me, it's like if you're going to shop at Goodwill... Like that, the item you're gonna get's been through some shit. <laughs> so I guess for me, it's like the bins really. I don't see. It. I guess I don't see a difference between the bins and the store. I hear you. I'm just explaining what other people. Their big concern is that that it's just been through so many hands, and once it ends up in the bins, it basically just sits at the bins until it sells. Yeah. The bins are big. Right. And a lot of people can't reach across and dig through. And they'll put their kids in the bin to dig through it. Okay. So that's the other thing is like, there's kids digging through it. And people will climb in with their shoes on. So they're basically saying they feel like the items would be really dirty and wouldn't mm -hmm. want to buy and keep it. But you and I typically go to Goodwill for other reasons. And the other thing too, like if you have, say you have bed bugs. And you're climbing into these bins. You're touching everything. Right. Well, I mean, you still run into that risk at a regular Goodwill, though. I know, but like, let's say you're going through the wood aisle or the, you know, pots and pans. It's all on shelves. Yeah. And you can kind of clearly see if it's got like droppings on it or if it's dirty, right? Right. But in the bins, it kind of just, if there's bed bugs or rat poop or anything like that in the items. Because you know there is. Like, there's been many times at Goodwill, I'll, like, look in a vase, and there's legit mouse poop. Or, you know, because the vase was in someone's garage, and then it got donated. But in the bins, everything's in a bin. So all those little crumbs and mouse poop and stuff mm. fall into the bottom of the bin. And God knows how long it is to, like, clean those bins out. Yeah. And, you know, kids are climbing through it. People have shoes on. I'm just telling you what other people... I don't go to the bins. I've never even been to the bins. Right. But other people tell me I wouldn't go there. It's not really worth it. You have to spend the whole day digging mm. through all these bins, which has exposed you now to so much. Yeah. You can't touch your face the whole time, you, need, you know, because of the hand and foot disease. And, you know, people who go to the bins, they go there to, to like, spend the whole day and dig through to get the good deals. Because instead of uh, by price, that the Goodwill bins is by weight. That sounds like a good deal. Sounds like a great way yeah. to get some shit for cheap to sell on eBay. <laughs> and it sounds new and different. I could tell you if I went, I would be bored out of my mind because yeah. I wouldn't be digging. Because when I go to Goodwill, I, I'm typically not really window shopping. I'm just kind of tagging along. I'm not somebody who likes to dig through stuff like that. Yeah. 
Some people are. They're like, like they love to dig through a box or whatever. I don't. I mean, I do love to dig through the movie bin at Walmart, but that's been fucking forever. But try that with like 45 bins. Yeah. While fighting people. And you're digging, and then that other side, they're digging on their side, so they're just like toppling over each other. It's, uh... And there's broken items in there. Most people wear gloves because there could be broken things or shards and stuff in there. You don't know when you're digging. It's a valid point. Yeah. So. I'm with you. I'm with you on it all. I, uh, yeah. I just have no desire to go. I feel you on that. Other people have just like talked me right out of it. I feel you on that. So after Goodwill and Spirit Halloween, where do we go? Home? Back to the hotel? Yeah. When we went to Spirit Halloween, man, poof. Okay, so the one we normally go to is not like a big, big city. So it wasn't, when we go, it's never crazy packed. And the store, yeah, needs some work, some zoning, but. The whole store needed zone. That's what I'm saying. Like, there was shit piled up in the aisle no, look, we could walk. It was so bad that not one person could walk through that aisle. Yeah. So the, bad. the one we went to Friday night was in Clarksville, Indiana, which is like part of, it's essentially like Jeffersonville, which essentially is Louisville, just on the Indiana side. Of, yeah, if you're not familiar with Louisville, Kentucky, it's right on the board of Indiana. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, just, there was a lot of people. I did not expect to see that many people there. It was a little much for me. It was like, I couldn't even enjoy, I couldn't really shop and stuff because I, I was just like, ugh. I felt like I was Black Friday shopping in a Halloween store for Halloween on Halloween. Right. <laughs> That's kind of how it felt. It was weird. There's just so many people there. I was like, God damn. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess it was a Friday night. So, I guess that... I guess I would be more shocked if we went on, like, a Monday night and see that many people. That's true. So, I guess it was Friday night. It, it was Friday night. So, I guess... I mean, it makes sense. And, yeah. again, bigger city. But, I don't know. I think, like, two employees for the whole store, so... I think they were just like eh, understaffed. And Did you see the one motherfucker almost hit me over? He almost ran me over with a cart. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. He had a full cart, and I'm like walking slowly they're behind you. They and hire he, like, teenagers to do this job. Yeah, he like comes right behind me and then goes around. I'm like, Jesus Christ, am I in your way? I'm sorry, yeah, guy. Yeah, you were. Sorry, dude. So, yeah, it was just, yeah. Every time we go to Spirit Halloween, we always leave like. Never again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because I think we did it last year, too. We're like, <laughs> like, why do we come here? It's like a tradition. I think so. Just to look at all the overpriced shit we don't want. It's like need. going to the pumpkin patch every year. Like, you don't need a pumpkin. People just like doing it. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. But I was actually kind of legit looking for something while I was there, and I did not even see what I wanted. Why are you looking for something? Well, because I thought it would be cool, like... You know those one robes that have the hoods? I want to get something that's just the hood. And it like, and I know they make them because like some of the masks. Why don't I you think, just get like a cheap hoodie from Goodwill or Walmart and then just cut the hood off? Well, because I would want it to be something that, Like at the shoulder length cut. Yeah, I don't know. You know, like cut like here so that it covers your shoulders? Yeah, I guess I mean I could. I, knew, I would want one to be like a really big hood. You know, like really loose, really big. I told you I suggested Grim Reaper, but you like, I don't want it to be black. I want it to be brown. Well, no, that was for if I was going to get a robe to do the whole Dark Lotus thing again. Which, I don't know if you saw um, at that other place we went, which we'll get there. I did see one. I don't know if you saw me point it out to you. I'm going to be honest. I don't remember a lot of this trip. <laughs> <laughs> I was really sleep deprived. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I was at a very low function level. Oh man, that's funny. And I was just, you know what it was? You were driving, so I got to be a passenger princess, which I don't get to do very often. And it was just like, I got to be able to just like, relax. I wasn't the one that had to like care for you or anybody else. Like I was being cared for. Yeah. I was being driven. I could drink if I wanted to, cause I wasn't the driver. You were all like protective, like when you like got between me and that one guy. Oh yeah. I was like, "Damn, boo! You you're trying to get freaky tonight?" Yeah. Hey, look, I'm trying to earn more than just an oatmeal cream. <laughs> no, 
But the thing is, like, you, like, as a woman, like, that is, like, ooh. Yeah. And that one guy that, like, came up to us and he was, like, something about stealing your wife or whatever. And you're like, yeah, you gotta fight me for her. Yeah. Oh, that, when he said, you have to fight me for her, I was like, I don't think there was anything else you could have said that would have been more perfect. That was, like, the most perfect thing you could have said. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, some guys would have said, like, oh, she's too expensive, you can't afford her, or, oh, take her, take her off my hands. Like, there's a lot of shitty things that I feel like a lot of husbands would say in that situation. And you said not only the most sexiest thing possible, I think, but you said, like, the most classy thing. Like, you, I don't know, it was just, like, it wasn't really contra, like, it wasn't like you actually meant fighting him. Like, the way that you said it was kind of, like, jokeful. I don't know. It got me. But yeah, I just I was able to like relax, I think. And I had tremendous, I think the lights on your coaster, so be careful. I had this tremendous radiating, the day before the trip, I started to get, I get migraines and I could feel it coming. So I took medicine and I was heavily medicated the whole trip <laughs> and it kept the migraine at a headache, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. So I kept having like these moments, like the one time we were at the museum and we were like joking and everything and then it comes back on. Mm. I just can feel it creeping in the back of my, like just through my head. And it's like, oh, here we go. And I'm like trying to breathe. It's always rough. And you're like, oh, should I take another pill? Should I wait? Cause I'm like, damn, we got the concert tonight. I should probably wait and take more medicine then yeah. to be more stronger. And then, but it, it's so like, if you've never had a migraine, it's hard to explain to somebody. It's not just light sensitivity and hearing sensitivity. <laughs> we were at the hotel and I was like, babe, I can't. Like, I can't remember what noise you were doing, but I was like, you gotta stop. I, I like literally am about ready to put my head to the wall. I don't even remember. It, it's, it's like... I think that I heard an equivalent of like keys rattling next to your ear. Yeah, like that's the equivalent to other noises. Yeah. Like it's so sensitive and and everything's irritable. Yeah. It's like an ear everything's an irritable noise. Even things that shouldn't be irritable. No, I know I know exactly what yeah. you mean. But the the thing that people don't understand about migraines is you can have uh ocular migraines, which I do have where you, it obstructs your eyesight during, like when it comes in and it gets strong, stronger, it kind of comes in waves, it can obstruct your vision and it makes it really hard to drive and just be present in the moment, to be honest. Yeah. I felt bad. There's one point we were like laying at the hotel and I could just feel it come. And I'm just like bracing this like contraction of a migraine. <laughs> <laughs> my migraine contraction I'm like just bracing it and it was it was such a, um, a good example because we were having a good conversation yeah like I was enjoying it and just in seconds it went from oh my god can you please shut up like <laughs> oh my god stop talking like that it instantly it went from like this really nice conversation I was enjoying with you to like I just couldn't stand to hear you talk <laughs> and I didn't want to say that to you, but Kenny's just going, he's like, I know what you mean. Going on and that. on and on. And I remember saying, okay, babe. Okay. And you like did like a double take. And I was like, I'm sorry. Okay. My head hurts. Yeah, and then you were like, oh, okay. You know, but I felt so bad. Yeah. I don't remember what it was, but I remember it was like something. <laughs> he just went going on and on. I was like, I can't do it. It's too much. <laughs> was that Friday or was that Saturday? I don't know. I, I was remember. so medicated. I medicated on the drive down. Medicated every day there. Yeah. So I mean, that was pretty much all of our Friday then. It was just those two things and we settled in. We went to Jersey night. Mike's. Yeah. And we came back to the hotel and we just like hung out, watched game shows, cuddled we, with the dogs. Which is a new tradition for us because normally mm -hmm. at our hotel we watch Impractical Jokers or <laughs> Ancient Aliens. I think... Well, I know for sure. I have seen every episode of Ancient Aliens <laughs> yeah. for a fact. And some I have seen more than once. 
so. But I think the Impractical Jokers, like, we've pretty much seen all, most of them so, and at yeah. that point. It's just like, ugh. It was kind of nice, though, watching uh, game shows. Yeah. Watch Wheel of Fortune, which has been forever. Family Feud, which is always fun. And then, uh, what was the one? America Says. We watched that one. I, oh, that I, one, I enjoyed yeah. that show. That was nice. But, yeah, so then, then Saturday came. And, Saturday, uh, we had had plans to meet up with our friends and play games. We, like, specifically brought down games for that. And things just didn't line up. Yeah. Things, you know, they had things that came up and things just didn't work out. And that's okay. It happens. So we we're like, all right, well, we don't want to just sit in a hotel all day. Right. So, which, that's the other thing, I think, between being medicated and being sleep deprived. Because I could not get comfortable Friday night. I have a really bad back and that bed fucking sucked. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I was I, miserable. I didn't like the bed either. Uh-uh. The one at Camp Zool was nice. That one was not. I was just miserable all night. Yeah. So then we got up. We're like, well, sh like if they got shit going on, I'm like, well, shoot, what are we going to do? So we're like looking up museums and stuff. And one of our friends, Coma, suggested kind of like a Halloween store. Yeah. What was the name of that? It's on my Instagram. I was like, I'm going to look it up real quick. But he suggested it, moments. and I would 10 out of 10 recommend this place. It was a great recommendation. We enjoyed it. Half of it is like a spirit Halloween. Yeah. The other half is a combination. There's a one part. When you first go in, the middle part is like spirit Halloween. To the right. You got it? Yeah. Caulfield's Novelty. It's there in Louisville. Caulfield's novelty it has a giant bat and a skull outside. So you go in, the middle is like Spirit Halloween. To the right is like a haunted house. But not a haunted house, but more of like a display yeah. for things you could buy from them for a haunted house. Yeah, but the way the displays were set up, it was kind of like a little haunted house. Like, yeah, you know, but nobody, you would go like, through and people would scare you. It was like set yeah. up to where no it would trigger and you would, ah! Yeah. yeah. Kind of like Spirit Halloween, but a little bit more, oh. un more a little no. way more unsuspecting. No, they have like a fake yard set up and fences. And no, that's what I'm saying. Like at Spirit Halloween, their displays are set up with little things that say, step here, try me. Mm -hmm. This didn't have that. You literally just kind of walked up to the displays and some of them would pop And it up. wasn't like a showroom. It was dark. Yeah. And you go in and there's like fake trees and fake fences for houses and stuff. It was really cool. And then on the left side, you had like Michael Myers' house. Yeah, that was a nice little display. And then on Instagram, I posted it. They had like a fake old staircase yeah. that would open up and a dragon would come out. It was really cool. Which it was cool how the guy explained it. He, uh, I was going around the corner because one little section too near the Michael Myers' house, they also have like trick stuff like magician, yeah. magic tricks. And so we were walking around that part, and we came up, and I seen the stairs, and I was like, looking, I was like, I didn't know where it led to. And the guy was like, "Have you? did you see our dragon? I was like, no, I didn't. He grabs the banister and pulls it, and the stairs open up, and the dragon came out. I was like, that's cool. Yeah. I had a deja cool. vu moment then. Did you? Yeah, and it, like, really freaked me out, because I'm like, is it deja vu? Like, am I reliving this life? Or is it like another me and another reality? Yeah, deja vu freaks me out yeah. too. Because it's like you start to hear certain phrases and you're like, I heard you tell me this before. Have you heard the scientific reason that they think deja vu happened? Mm -mm. So they are, oh, maybe. it's just a guess. Obviously, they don't know for sure. They think that deja vu is caused by our brains are always processing the next thing. Mm. So it's always anticipating the next thing and the, you know, the next step, the next doorway. So sometimes it might be anticipating, you know, be careful. Someone might come around that corner really fast. Yeah. And so when someone does come around the corner really fast, you feel like, oh, deja vu. And it's not. It's more that your brain's already processed that as a possibility. As you are approaching mm -hmm. this turn, it's probably pros processed like 20 different scenarios that you're not aware of. And then when one of them comes through, it's like, oh, I feel like I have deja vu. But for me, 
it's not that. For me, it's a visual thing. Mm. Like, I remember seeing that staircase. We come up, and I'm like, God, does this look so familiar? And I cannot figure out why it looks familiar. And I'm, like, beating my, like, in my head, I'm, like, looping around, like, where do I know the staircase? I'm a visual person, so I'm like, I know that carpet. I know that banister. I know that it looks like a fake staircase that goes nowhere. And like something, like I know this staircase and I can't tell you why. And then when that dragon came out, it like, it, it just like fucking clicked. And I was like, I've seen this before. Yeah. And I, I like that, I hate that feeling. It's so freaky. I've had that, but differently. It's yeah. usually, it's usually someone will say something that's mm, like. Like audio. Yeah. Like I, I feel like I've heard it before and then it starts to visually, I'm like. It's weird because then it's like, was this a dream? Did I dream this? Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's interesting that ours are different. Yeah. I, I think mm. they're weird. They trip me out for sure. And it's interesting. But yeah, it was really cool. I posted the video on Instagram. I, I posted some stuff on Instagram. I'm saving a lot of it for like the vlog and yeah. the videos and stuff. But I literally have like 20 videos to film after this trip or edit after this trip. I started jotting them down on my paper because I was like, it was all in my head. And I was like, I just got to get organized. But it was a really cool store. I would 100% recommend it if you're in the area. And it's free to go. Yeah, it's free to go. You don't so you can take it. your kids and just go to like the haunted haunted house park, which is super small. Very small. But they'll have fun because there's like other stuff to look at. And there's um, like photo op opportunities too. Oh, for sure. One of the things that I thought was funny when we first got in there is somebody was in full costume. Oh, yeah. And I think they were shopping for, yeah. like, accessories. <laughs> and this little kid just immediately starts like, ah, ah, and I look over and then I see the guy in costume. Oh, it was, it was his mom's took... fault, not his. She, like, picks him up and she's like, look who it is, and, like, takes him over to them. <laughs> he can't get away. No wonder he was scared. And the guy wearing the costume did take the mask off. Yeah. So... Okay. He was like, I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah. Funny, he was sure. like the terror from the new movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So that was Art fun. Pro. And then we walked around downtown a little bit, seeing that Steve Harvey car. And I was like, is Steve Harvey in this stand-up comedy show? Because I we, we love watching Steve Harvey. Unless it was like a show that... We should look into it because I wonder if it was a radio because it was for a radio station, I believe. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they helped like the Steve Harvey career. Morning Show. Hmm. Yeah, we should look into it. Walked around downtown a little bit and then settled on the Fraser Museum, which is three levels of like your standard museum exhibits that you would expect from a museum, a state museum, I should say. And it was sixteen dollars to get in. Mm -hmm. And then they had a very old-fashioned, very beautiful bar upstairs, but that was a separate package. I do not know how much that cost, but it looked fun. It was like a taste testing of Kentucky bourbon, which one of the exhibits they had upstairs as well, which was free for the general admission or whatever, was every bottle of Kentucky bourbon ever produced. And whiskey. It was so cool to see, like, all the different bottles. Yeah. Well, like, I, I I, had heard of Evan Williams, but I didn't know it was a Kentucky brand. Sorry, I'm getting, like, so many notifications on my phone. <laughs> I know, me too. Um, yeah, it was really fun, though. I think next time, like, if we did go, maybe try that taste testing thing. It didn't cost too much. Yeah, that'd be neat. But I would want to go with a group of friends, not just, you right. know. It'd be an experience. Yeah. Well, and then one of the things that they did that we saw... It was like the first cocktail party. Yeah. That 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 looked neat. What was that one different? How? Well, I don't know. The taste testing one was that the little bar? That was the bar, right? Because there was they the had one two that was bars. Yeah. there was one that was closed doors. That was the cocktail party. But then there was a bar we had seen. But I feel like the cocktail party they'd probably have like you'd have to have a group of people, I think. Probably, or they would just sell tickets to however many people yeah. that wants to have enough. Or I think it would be more whatever. fun to go with friends because then you could actually hear people say, I like this one or I don't like that one, yeah. whatever. Oh my gosh, her dog is so precious. Isn't she? 
Yeah, it was so much fun. You literally spent, a, especially if you did the cocktail thing, you could be there all day long. Yeah. They also had like a movie theater, movie something, something movie related. Yeah. I like, didn't see it. I didn't understand it. But it was a separate ticket and you could go and watch movies. They also had guided tours. Mm -hmm. I think that movie one was in the area for like movie. It was like a movie, classic movie display or whatever exhibit. And so maybe it had a little movie. I don't. I don't know. I, I, just, I just know it was separate. I think it cost. Yeah, I know we kind of walked in that area and then we just kind of turned around and went back out. So like, I oh, it was close. Was there it? was nothing. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's why I turned around. Like that's the end. Of, I'm not even gonna oh, gotcha. bother walking around. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, when I own half the stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like a blast from the past exhibit, and I was like, mm. <laughs> I even got like half of everything that was in there. Anyways, it was like whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it, I would definitely recommend 8 out of 10, probably. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was completely accessible. If you like going to museums, I will say that. Yeah. If you like going to museums, you would like that. Yeah. If you're not someone that enjoys that kind of thing, it probably might not be your thing. So where did we go after that? After that, I believe we went back to the Jersey, Jersey Mike's. Mike's. <laughs> <laughs> and then went back to the hotel. Yeah. Which, I mean, come on, Jersey Mike's, sponsorship. I, I would. We totally literally do. fucking ate there every day for Camp Zool. We ate there twice during this trip. <laughs> we don't have one in our town, so. Well, and we we were, don't have one near us, I should say. And we were going to get it on the way back and... When you said, no, it's not. I'm like, are you not feeling well? I was, too. Like, my head was, like, radiating, and I just couldn't even think about eating. And the only thing, like, he was, like, shoving water down my throat. So I was like, I, I, I meet you halfway and at least drink water. <laughs> I couldn't even think about food. It was funny, though, because we got three-fourths of the way home, and you're like, we should have stopped at Jersey. Because like. <laughs> the medicine started to kick in, I was like, fuck, I'm hungry. Yeah. We should have got Jersey Mike's. <laughs> Which, when we were coming through Indy, I almost was going to say something to you. Yeah, you because I knew there was one on the way. And then once something. we got past it, that would be it. <sighs> it's okay. <sighs> yeah, it is what it is. We'll have to look and see how many are in Fort Wayne. Yeah, you know, it's just... Like, we have Jersey Mike's near us. It's just not, like, super close. And I kind of, like, don't want to get burnt out on it. Because yeah. I totally would burn myself out and then never eat there again. You know how I do that with stuff? Well, I mean, the closest one's an hour away, so it's... But it's not. Yeah. I was, like, purposely avoiding saying that. Gotcha. But still, it's 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 not just a, hey, let's go here for lunch. No, it's not one of those kind of places. Yeah. So I just avoid going and save it for vacations. Like, add it, like, super out-of-town vacations. Yeah. Like, not Fort Wayne or Indy. Like, when we go to Louisville, we go to Ohio, like, super out of town. Right. Then I see it for, like, that. It's like a little treat, like a vacation treat. Yeah. It's a little vacation spot. Yeah, because we have a lot of fast food places around here. Like, we have all the basics everywhere else you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So, when we're like, where do you want to go eat? It's like, nowhere, because we have all this at home. Right. And nothing sounds good. Except for Jersey Mike. <laughs> until it doesn't anymore, or until we get one. Yeah. Because that's what happened with Culver's. <laughs> yeah. So, and then we just hung out at the hotel then? Yeah, we hung out. We were originally going to do like a pre-party thing at Shanzi's, but I think by that point it was, I think by the time we got done at the museum, it was getting to be like 4 o'clock. Yeah. I think it kind of like snuck up on us because we were like, Sitting there, we're kind of like, well, shit, we really need to, like, take the dogs for a walk and get this done and get this ready to go because we head over. Yeah. Shanzi uh, <laughs> ended up going over to the venue, and he was kind of scoping and scouting out the parking lot. So, yeah. it was doors at 6, show is at 6.30, so it was, like, 6.15 when he was saying the, the parking lot was starting to fill up. So, we were like, let's go ahead and just go so we can get a spot. We went in, and Loon Squad went on, and like the last song or something like that, Buckshot came on with them. Yeah, which, because Loon Squad is signed to Mob Style. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then from there, 
But I do want to give a shout out to that Jay Rama guy because I did enjoy his music. And I actually looked him up, followed him on Instagram. And he's only got one album out from what I can see. He did really good. He gave me, like, when we were sitting there listening, I was, like, enjoying it. And, like, I looked at, at Shanzi and I was like, I'm trying to figure out what he sounds like. Light? Well, he said something about light. And I was like, because mm -hmm. he's got, he did have that, like, double time chopper style to him. And I was like, no, not quite light, because it wasn't like that high-pitched voice that Light has. But it was and like then, the way that he rapped, I think. And then as I was talking to Coma about it, like, it just clicked. And I was like, Young Wicked, that's the flow he has. Yeah. Because he would sing, too, kind of how Young Wicked does. I was like, that's who he reminds me of, Young Wicked. So I enjoyed him, Jay Rama. So I looked him up, but yeah. Enjoyed his, I just enjoyed his stuff. Send sure. me some stuff. Have you heard anything good? I'll have to, yeah. Send it my from, way. From what I had seen, he's got the one album out. It came out back in 2019. But he's also released a bunch of singles, which... Yeah, I don't know how I feel about singles. Uh, Making a Martyr is the album he put out back in 2019. And from the looks of it, a lot of the songs that are on there that he might have performed last night... Um, I think he performed a lot of singles last night because there was a couple. There's one of them where it had like his fiance singing on the hook. Is that who? Yeah, 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 that guy. Oh, okay. When she came out, that was his. That was his fiance. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, yeah, I enjoyed his set, and sometimes that's why I like going to openers because every so often you find that gem that's not like your typical horrorcore rapper you get you get some diamonds in saying, the rough when we're like up front vibing to fun time guys yeah other people are thinking that about them i i know and that's why i always try i try to remind myself that every artist that i love and like started out that way even icp they had their moment where they were performing as openers and people some people dug it other people didn't my <laughs> only about that is when the openers all sound the same yeah when they'll put back-to-back -back rap styles where it's like either like three different guys or you know a group of two guys and then another group of two guys and another group of two guys yeah. and they all rap the same and they all have the same flow and it's all the same shit that it's to all me, murder murder kill kill yeah I'm a juggalo, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and they put them back to back like that. To me, as someone who's not a fan or hasn't ever heard of them. Right. After the third band, it's like, okay, I need a break from right. this. You got to really stand out. You Yeah. And yeah. like, the one guy was like muffling really bad. And when he off stage or whatever, I told you, I was like, God, that just drives me nuts. And you were like, what? I was like. For one, he didn't say who he was, like who his band was, and then he didn't introduce the next person, and that drives me crazy. I want to know who's coming next. Yeah. And you had said, well, he did say who he was. I didn't catch it. It was yeah. too, you know, muffled, and it was like, man, like, what if I really enjoyed that show, that set? I don't even know what his name is. Yeah. I think that was Rex Sputin. We don't have to call him out, man. God damn, DC. Sorry. Can you, can you, I'm sorry, my brain's up here going like that. If, if I wanted to call the man out, I would have called him out. I, if I don't say his name, <laughs> it's because I don't want to call his ass out. Gotcha. I'm sorry. So I don't know, man, if it was the audio or if it was his voice or it was too close to his mouth. But I yeah. had a really hard time hearing what he said. Right. And so my point being is, if I did like his shit, it wouldn't matter because I didn't hear what his band or his rapper name was. Right. Until well, somebody else told me what his name was. I, I would like to say it's not that we're putting him on blast. We're giving constructive criticism. Oh, we're not. You did. I, w I would like to consider it con constructive criticism. And that's for anybody out there that's wanting to be a rapper. If you're good, Especially if you're going to open at a juggalo event say your name in the beginning say your name in the middle say your name at the end moving on stand out <laughs> dude you gotta try to do something different that's gonna make you stand out and that's what's tough because then you also have to kind of cater a little bit to it because you don't want to stand out so much that it's like foreign to what this demographic likes mm -hmm. 
So, and that's, that's what's super tricky. And that's why I don't help. <laughs> so, Buckshot came, or Fun Time Guys came on next. Yes. Buckshot and then Blaze was last. And for fun time, we got up front because, you know, we don't do it very often. I was like, these are the homies. They <laughs> fucking kill it. And I wanted to be up front. And I tried to get up front for Blaze, but I was like, I was one row back. So I was in the second row. Yeah. I, I could not. Like, I kept trying. There was, there was a spot if that girl would just move a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You see her over there. Which Blaze, Blaze killed it, Buckshot killed it. Mm -hmm. um, well, okay. If we're going to be throwing constructive criticism out, I got a big one for Buckshot. The Fog Machine Man? It was a lot of fog. Listen, I was going to record a whole set for Buckshot and couldn't get into one song. I couldn't even get like one full song of Buckshot's performance because the Fog Machine was so bad i couldn't see him on the video like there was no point to video him because he wasn't even on the video you couldn't even see him yeah it would be basically be like audio only and then it very shortly after like one or two songs after you couldn't see him in person in person couldn't see him on the stage because it was so foggy and if you think i'm being dramatic i'm not because when blaze came on after him which was several minutes after, <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I would say they give, like, what would you think, a good 15, 20 minutes between? Yeah. People can go out and smoke, go to the bathroom, right? Yeah. So you got to think, a good 15 minutes with fans going on, okay, had passed. A, a minimum of 15 minutes. Blaze comes on and does, like, one song. And he goes, God damn, I so, the fog machine's so bad, I can't even see you guys in the crowd. Well, one of the things I thought you were going with that was when he made the joke about, yeah, I see all that. I, I think he was... He's, he was gearing up for yeah. Blaze Up. Yeah. He and he said, was talking about how there was so much smoke. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, that I think that's still leftover fog. No, he made a joke like that he wished he could he you know could say it was weed. He's like, but I know it ain't weed, I know it's a fog machine and it, mm. you know, he's saying it was so bad he couldn't even see us. Which makes me wonder if backstage they were talking about it because maybe they didn't mean to put that much fog out. Did anybody check on Buckshot? Make sure he was okay. <laughs> like what well, was like saying it too? Like how like halfway through the Buckshot's um set, I was like, I don't even know if Buckshot's up there singing. It could be a doppelganger. It could be nobody. You couldn't tell. It was too foggy. We couldn't even see him. He could have passed out. He could have had like an audio track going. Right. He passed out. No one even knew. <laughs> I could hear it. It was that bad. I could hear. It. No, but there, he did a good were, job from what I could see. Yeah, there was parts where it cleared up just a little. And you could see, like, his silhouette. And but then, maybe then you would see the fog doing. machine take on. I'm like, dude, that's enough <laughs> fog. Stop turning them on. I don't know if they're on intervals or what, but cut it out. <laughs> I feel like maybe the fog machine had just a little too much solution put in. <laughs> that's what you know, happened. They're supposed to, like, not continuously run it is the problem. Mm. Somebody was like, okay, boss. Plugged it in and left it. They walked it away to, to go take a giant a shit and forgot to come back and turn it off. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, Buckshot did good. Blaze did amazing. And yeah. I was surprised when he did Dead Body Man in 2002. And I was even more surprised when I look around and not many people were singing along. Yeah. I was like, just one, does nobody know this song? Two, are people, like, just confused because they've never... Because, obviously, if you've ever listened to Dead Body Man 2002, it's got very... The, the, the verses are very similar to the original Dead Body Man, just kind of switched up. So I wonder if maybe that was just what confused them. I don't know. But, like, I... As soon as I heard that beat kick in, I was like, Oh, Dead Body Man, Dead Body You know, I was immediately, like, getting into it, and I look around, and I just see not yeah. many people doing it. Well, keep in mind that it was getting, it was the last one to go on. Everyone's tired. True. Everyone's drunk at that point. <laughs> it just kind of made me think back to the gathering last year for the Wicked Clowns from Outer Space show. When, you know, sitting there rocking out singing and I look around and there's not a bunch of people singing along. Like, do you guys even know ICB? Like, well, dude, people are like, here exhausted. They're fucking tired. They're drunk. They're on drugs. I, I know. They're exhausted. They're sleep deprived because people are doing fireworks all night long. Yeah. 
I just, I just. They're love just the, trying to survive the day. I just love the music, and that's that's one of the moments where you can you can see it in me because I'm singing along. Well, not everyone's comfortable to do that. Too. I guess that's true. Fair point. Yeah. Oh, it was a good show though. Very good show. And they didn't really like kick us out like they do at ICP shows. Well, they didn't have Fago to clean up <laughs> like they do at yeah. ICP shows. So we hung out in the parking lot for a little while with our friends. And then we headed home. It was like 2 in the morning. DC went straight to bed. Lucky duck, of course. Mm -hmm. There's me, wide fucking awake. I'm wide awake. It was one of those things where like, I was so physically tired, I wanted to go to bed. But my head, you know when like you can hear your head pulsating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you can hear your head's heartbeat. I was like, oh my god. And laying down like made it worse. Oh god. I so I sat up, like kinda like sat like up in bed a little bit and I was like doing stuff on my phone for like social media, like from the concert and stuff, editing yeah. pictures and things and and then I just like I took my sleeping pill and I could kinda feel myself like starting to get tired. I probably fell asleep around three something. Mm -hmm. I would say I was like up for at least an hour or so after you. Oh no, it was a Delphi. Was it that bad? Might have been. You were snoring. No, that was Friday night. Oh. Friday night, you were trying to watch the Delphi. Okay. Well, anyways, I was probably up like an hour after you, just like on social media and stuff, trying to like edit things and post things. We did, oh, we did see Blaze after the concert. On We were leaving. We got at the stoplight together. But by the time I realized it was Blaze, it was too late. There was a lady in the driver's seat and then a little kid in the back. And it was so cute. It was his little, fa it was his little family. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's so cool. She drove him to his show and shit. That's yeah. cool. But yeah, it was too late before like the light turned green and we didn't get to like wave at him or anything. But... So I went to bed, sorry, I got so sidetracked. I went to bed about like three something. And then at six something, I woke the I woke up and I'm one of those people where I'm an early bird. Yeah, your body was like, get yeah. up. I'm up, I'm up. So I wake up at six and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like as soon as I realized like what time it was, yeah. I was like, oh, it's not enough sleep. Go to the bathroom and I'm laying there, I'm just laying there and laying there, and I'm like, God. I was like, all right, I'm going to set my alarm for 8 o'clock. There's plenty of time to get up and get ready. Because checkout's at 11. And apparently my dumb ass, being half asleep, didn't set the alarm correctly. So it never went off. I did end up falling back asleep. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was you, like, shit, we got to get up. So you woke back <laughs> up. Shit, we got to get ready. You woke back up because you were like, you want to take your medicine. Because, uh, you know, I don't know. I actually my... hadn't fallen asleep. Really? Yeah, I laid there from six to seven something. Gotcha. And I, like, I'm, like, on my phone, right? So I'm, like, I see it's, like, after seven o'clock, and I'm, like, wake, you know, you up. I'm, like, you might want to take your medicine. I got alarm set for eight, so I take some medicine, lay back down, whatever. Well, when you told me to check to, you were, like, you might want to take your medicine, I left over and tapped on the nightstand so my watch would light up. It was a little charger. And it was like 8 14. I was like, uh. Oh, was it? No, no, no. Yeah. I was like, it's after 8. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was like, wait a minute. Oh, that's what it was. I didn't look at the time. I knew it couldn't have been 8 o'clock because my alarm didn't go off yet. And I knew it had to be after 6. I had been laying there for a while. So that's why I woke you up to your medicine. Yeah. But then when you said that it was after 8, I was like, what? No, my alarm didn't go off. But then I started to like get tired and I. Had a hard motivate. Had a hard time getting up. <sighs> yeah, we're both here yawning. I mean, we got out of there in time for checkout, but it was it was too close for me. Yeah, well, yeah we I felt were, rushed, pushed. We were done showering, all that. Like well, I got out of the shower. You said oh, it's just out ten o'clock, so we're still good on time. So we did decent. I didn't. I think we did decent. I like went to the shower and then like went and sat down. And was like, fuck, I'm too tired to get dressed. And then I got dressed and I sat back down. I was like, oh, I'm too tired to pack. And I packed a little bit. I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm too tired. 
too tired. To and I was anything. hungry, and I was like, I don't want to eat. I'm too tired to make something. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. So it was just, it was just like three days of, yeah, it was three nights of just not sleeping well. So I'm really hoping that tonight I'm gonna take some melatonin. I think, mm. not sleeping medicine, just melatonin. Correct. And just let myself fall into my beautiful, comfortable bed. I very desperately need to blow my nose. Okay. So I think I'm gonna clip this off real quick. The corner of blow my nose. Well, I guess while you're doing that, I'll give an update on our dog. Oh, there you go. Because last time we talked about her. But I wanted to first give everybody this is your reminder to pause the video and down below comment any suggestions you have. Any questions you would like for me and DC to answer? And if you have any advice questions that you would like me and DC's input on. Because that is one of my favorite things is that Am I the Asshole game? I love that game. Where people submit questions or scenarios of like what's something they, they went through and it's like, Am I the Asshole or were they in the wrong? <laughs> So if you have advice questions, just regular questions, whatever, this is your reminder to pause the video now and now is the time. We will go over the comment section in the next podcast. So recap from last time, our dog is having some butthole issues, we'll say. She had those she abscess. She had some prolapse going on and we thought maybe an enlarged anal gland come to find out it was prolapse she had a massive and large anal gland on the left side yeah and then she had two abscess which i'm not sure if that means two abscess lumps or i don't know what that means but it's just the left side of her she's on antibiotics she was on shots so she's getting all snuggled in the blankie oh. Anyways, it was really scary the first week because she wasn't eating or drinking and I had to take a syringe to get water down into her mouth and her throat so she could stay hydrated. She lost a bunch of weight, as you can imagine, not eating for a whole week and became really lethargic. I can't explain it any other way than like she just like her fur felt dry and her face just looked sunken in and I was starting to get really, really scared and I was like, I'm not going to panic until the week mark. Yeah. <clears throat> and then like the last day or whatever before the week mark she started to show some improvement and she was eating like some ham and a little bit of a banana for us and started to, to do better right she started to not be so depressed and would actually like wag her tail when she seen us and stuff like that so we thought she was pretty well healed up when we went to hollow bleed she only had two antibiotic pills left she took them and then we're like, hey, she's doing really good. So we'll go ahead and take her to hollow bleed with us and you know, blah, blah, blah. While we're there, she's not pooping, which first started to concern me. She did poop the first day, but then she didn't poop any of the rest of the day. Yeah, while we were so there. the last day, which is today, when I took her out at the hotel before we left, I got a really good look at her her butthole when she pooped and the light was just the light was glistening it was beautiful angle most beautiful butthole you've ever seen in your whole life what a glistening <laughs> and i got a really good look at it and the thing is so raw and so red and when she went to poop it prolapsed out i would say probably around the inch mark I don't want to be dramatic and say two inches. So I would probably say like an inch. It started to come out with the poop. And then like when the last herd came out, it kind of went back in, but it was still out a little bit, looked really inflamed. And you could tell she was like flexing it. Like it probably felt weird to her. It just looked really, really raw. But it wasn't bloody or anything, which it had been. It had been. We thought that was all over with. When we were picking up the playpen and stuff, I had seen some blood, some anal seepage basically on the towels. 
And so it was kind of like that moment of like, I here I thought she was almost like better. Cause like the lump that she had was getting smaller, yeah. you know, and she seemed to be feeling better and eating better and everything. And I was like, oh, damn it. Because now it means when we come back home, she's going to have to sleep in that playpen and the downstairs and won't be able to have her upstairs with us, which they have dog beds upstairs, but we don't want her bleeding and pooping all over the dog bed because they both share it. Yeah. And they'll alternate through the night. Right. And so if it's an infection, I don't want it spreading to our other dog. So I was like, damn it, we just, we just like moved her up from having to sleep separate and segregated. And I just hate that we have to segregate her like that. I don't want her to feel like this is my worry. I don't want her to think that we don't love her or yeah. she's being punished. Look, look at that cute face over there. Yeah, I know. It's very she's cute. all squished up in a little cocoon in her little bed. And she's so precious. She's the most precious thing I've ever. She's a precious queen. I've ever seen my whole life. <laughs> I love her so much. You don't even understand. I do kind of wonder, though, if, like, just the stress and anxiety of going down there may have caused her well, to Well, I'm going to call her that Monday and just see. Instead of paying an office fee and everything and taking her back down there, if they would recommend just maybe, like, one more round of medicine, that I could just come in and pick that up. Because the medicine was only $16, I think. Because or it might have been 15 and, and just see if that helps because it, it seemed like she was doing so good and then once she stopped the medication she started getting worse again yeah well because the other thing that i wonder about the blood that we saw remember when we went to camp the first night we found blood all over the floor in the bathroom and we pinned them up yes but that was like fresh blood like from a tooth or something like maybe she snagged her tooth on yeah. a toy or something that's what i thought just yeah it just kind of made me wonder yeah. if like it's it was connected. No, you're right. I mean, it could be. Who knows, right? Yeah. So, but I'm still gonna call him, I think, and just see what he would suggest another round of antibiotics. Or if he wants to see it. Yeah, if he wants to, like, a checkup, then yes, I'll take her, you know. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, at the end of the day, she still had some seepage. Yeah. Yeah, and we, because we thought she was doing better, right? So we let her up on the hotel bed for, like, cuddle time. Didn't know this was before we found the blood. And on the white, the white <laughs> hotel bed, we put him off the bed, and I like turn the light on or something like that. And I look, I'm like, oh my god! Couple I literally of stains on the foot oh, of the bed. everywhere. And I told Cam, yeah. they're gonna think we had like nasty period sex. This is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it was too. everywhere. We were in doing butt stuff. <laughs> That's what they're gonna think because it was like bloody and also poopy shades everywhere. And I was yeah. like, oh my god! And you know what? They can just mind their business. <laughs> I'm what, sure they've what, seen what we do in our hotel room that we paid for is our business. Listen, I can tell you as someone who worked in a hotel, I've seen worse. I'm sure. I got some horror stories when I worked oh, in the hotel. I'm sure. Probably fucking dirty condoms hanging on the wall, slapped against the wall, just hitting there. We found a lot of sex toys left. Oh. Dirty. Ah. Oh. Yeah, and so that would be like, you always wear gloves because of that, but that would be like, you would be, like be nauseating trying to throw it away and then you'd go change your gloves because you'd be so grossed out. Yeah. I did find a few used condoms and that was really that. I really struggled with that. Just the visual of it. Ugh. Yeah. But the most was this one guy. I think I told you this before. It was one guy in the hotel. He did not have, we even asked. We're like, did he have any company? No company. All night. It was just him. He had so many empty beer bottles, Jesus. cans, cans mostly, and glass bottles that we filled up four trash bags. Jesus Christ. And we're like, could he have snuck people in his window? Like, we were trying to figure out, like, you sure? And the front desk was like, dude, nobody came in all night. It was a slow night. I'm like, how the fuck did this man drink this much beer? How did he carry it in? We, we, no one knew. No one knew. Crazy. It was like, we're like, bro, you gotta come look at, you know, room 104. You're not gonna believe this shit. The only... Like, it was everywhere. <laughs> the only other option or scenario I could see is maybe other people in other rooms got invited into his oh, room. Oh, yeah, that could be. And he, sh and they all drank or he had that much alcohol and he just shared with the other people. 
I mean, that could be. I don't know. It was an older guy. I wanted, like, a bunch of college kids or something. It was just one of those things where, like, we filled up a trash bag. And we're like, God damn, there's still more. And then we filled up that trash bag. We're like, God damn. God damn. Four trash bags. And for his whole room. Insane. And there was a little bit of food trash, but it was mostly just beer cans. But yeah, so they're going to probably see our bedding and be like, what the fuck did they do this weekend? God damn. <laughs> and, and, our older dog, she loses hair really bad. Just cause she's oh old. yeah, dude, there was so much. But it looked hair. like black pubes all over the bed. <laughs> with the anal seepage, I'm just like, they're gonna, they're gonna fucking judge us when they come clean our room. It's okay. You know how many of them probably saw us and will probably ever see us again? Yeah. But you know what? I always do this. You know how I always like prep the room before we leave? Yeah. So maybe they'll appreciate that. Exactly. exactly. So and I love that yeah. you do that. I'll see about that today when I was helping I gather the towels up and put them in the tub. I was like, you know, I feel like the housekeeping staff appreciates this enough that if they did see something that was kind of off the wall, they wouldn't even say <laughs> anything. It's because when, when I worked and I understand that this is, it's not the Norma Airby Hotel, but it's similar. You have a quota of how many rooms to do in an hour. Yeah. So for us, it was three, which meant you had to spend less than 30 minutes on a whole room. Yeah. Now, if the room wasn't bad, easy. Not a bad deal. But if the room was bad, guess what? The other rooms take the slack. They don't get cleaned as well because they, it's not their, it's not their fault. They're being kind and stuff. So I always do three things when I go to a hotel, and I highly suggest it. Um, I, well, I should say I do three things beforehand and three things after. When you get there beforehand, peel off the mattress cover, the sheet, and look on the corner by the head of the bed. Peel everything off you can until you get to the mattress and look at that. Make sure there's no bed bug droppings. Also make sure that you're checking behind the bed, behind the nightstands, underneath the bed. If you find any kind of trash or anything like that, they probably didn't get a chance to vacuum or sweep because like I said, quotas. And you can just call the front desk or whatever, like go down to the front desk and say, hey, there's like still trash in my room. I would like a different room. That's what I suggest. It's just looking for those things. Flush the toilet, make sure the TV turns on, microwave everything before you start unpacking your shit. Yeah. Look for bed bugs, check behind and underneath things, and then make sure everything electronically and plumbing works. That's the three things I always do. Yeah. When I'm leaving a hotel, this is what I suggest. All the towels, every towel anywhere, goes into the bathtub. Oh, she's snoring. Was that one? Yeah, she fell asleep. So all of the yeah. all the towels go in the bathtub. Um, they all end up in the same place, and it's just easier for them to not have to. We have when we where I worked, we had to count the towels. So it was a nightmare to try to like running back and forth between like the bedroom and the bathroom, trying to get everything together, and then count the towels. Then you put them in the laundry hamper, and then you put the bedding. It was just a lot. It just makes it easier for them to go one, two, three, four, counting them as they're picking them up, and then they just toss them in the hamper. Second thing is I always take trash bags, which I know that not everyone wants to do this, but <clears throat> you can also just gather your trash and put it the same in one location. But we we take trash bags with us. All of our trash goes in there, and then the last day before we leave, we take the trash bag out of the bathroom, and sometimes I'll have a little one like out by the desk or something. We put that in the trash bag and so then we tie it up and then it goes off in the corner. Like at uh, Hollow Bleed, we had two trash bags. They were in the corner together. Yeah. It's an easy grab and go and all the trash is taken care of. All they have to do is make the bed and wipe stuff down. The third and the most important thing to do for hotel staff. You turn that AC all the fucking way down <laughs> on blast and you leave it for them. They'll turn it off when they get there. It was like this thing that we just, I cannot tell you how much of a blessing it was when you were like rushing between rooms and you go into a room where someone forgot and they left the AC on. It was like, 
refreshing. We had a rule, like he was a stickler on when you get into the room, the first thing you had to do was turn the AC or the heat off. So if he walked by and you had the AC running while you were in there working, you would get in trouble because it's waste. It's wasteful. Yeah. So if we go in there and the AC has been off already, it's going to be like miserable. Uh -huh. But if it's blasting on cold, we go in there, we turn it off. It's still going to be cold for a while. And it literally is like just such a relief for that 15 minutes while you're in there yeah. to get cooled off. It was, yeah. But yeah, that's what I always do. And thank you for taking and following these helpful yes. hotel tips. If you have any other hotel questions, I may have answers to them. <laughs> or what are some things that you do yeah. to help take care of them? Comment that down below. Yeah, I don't suggest leaving tips because sometimes that causes more problems. Because mm. sometimes we would like team up. And do rooms together. Mm. Yeah. And then there's a whole issue because sometimes you can't break it evenly and stuff. Well, uh, well there you go. If you're going to leave a tip, make sure yeah. it's an even dollar amount. But two, I highly two suggest ones or two fives. Pick up your trash. Pick up your towels. Make sure that the only thing she has to do or they have to do is make the bed, restock stuff, wipe things down. And throw your dirty fucking condoms away. Nobody wants to see yeah. that shit. And if you don't take trash bags too, that's why I say you can always pile all your trash up in one corner where the trash can is, even if it's like next to the trash can. You know, just put it all in one place for them. It's a, it's a lifesaver. Oh, one of the things we forgot to mention is we always take glue traps. Oh, that's not to help them. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying it's a good helpful tip for anybody going that's to a so hotel. I can sleep at night. I Yeah, I always take two glue traps. One for by our bed and one for by the front door. Because we usually stay in motels, which is where the door's exterior. Yeah. I did that one time. I can't remember where we went. Oh, we went to one that was really buggy. And I had a thought. I was like, I think I'm going to bring a glue trap next time. And we did. And we caught a bunch of shit on it. And I was like, never will I ever go to a hotel without one now. Because we caught so much shit. Yeah. I did check, That's it's kind of like satisfying too, like you check before you leave. Granted, we were only there for two days. The one by our bed only had one in it. The one behind the TV, I did check, it had nothing. It had nothing, so that's good. There's a lot of stink bugs there though. Yeah. But also, there was a huge gap in the front door, dude. Like, yeah. anything could have crawled underneath that. So, that's our precious plum over there. Yes, she is. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. How beautiful. She's all like squished up with her little cheekies on the side of the bed and she's snoring. And... I am about to do the same thing with yeah. her. Is there anything left you have to say before we end it? Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed Hollow Bleed. Yeah. And I would be interested in going again. I would too, for sure, yeah. I'm really glad that you talked me into going. Yeah. I was hesitant to make the drive with my back, yeah. but I'm glad that you talked me into it. I just got to talk you into November 1st. Yeah. See, Blaze was at home with Blaze, so it was a little easier to talk me into it. Yeah, you do like Blaze. I do. Yeah. I feel like Blaze, Big Hoodoo... And anybody kill are the ones where yeah, I could tell so you. They're so underrated. Where I could tell you, I'm like, they're going to be there. You'd be like, okay, let's go. Do you know how long it's been since I've seen Hoodoo? It's been a while. How long has it been? Uh, Hollow Wicked? For us? He was at Hollow Wicked that one year we went with Timmy. Yum Yum Bedlam Release Party was the last time we saw Big Hoodoo perform. Oh, you're right. That was the last time yeah. we saw him perform. He performed a lot of his new stuff then, though. Yeah. I'm a big fan of his Crystal Skull album. Uh -huh. Not that his other stuff after that isn't good. It's just different. Yeah. And Crystal Skull is my favorite Big Hoodoo album. I think other than maybe like one or two songs, I like every song on the album. Yeah. 
Like the whole album is good. Well, what I like, that's kind of how I feel about Blaze or um, ABK. Is like there might be one or two songs I skip on ABK, um, but for the most part, I like every song that ABK does. For the most part, on the album. On like Medicine Bag or Hatchet Warrior. All of it. Mm. There's usually like that's what I'm saying. Like with Big Hoodoo and ABK, there's usually like on an album maybe one or two songs I will typically skip yeah. over. But like ninety percent or eighty percent, whatever you want to call that, I like. Yeah. I don't feel that way about Blaze, but Blaze usually performs his top hits, so yeah. I don't have that problem when we go see him in concert because it's all his top hits. Yeah, I was. A little it's all the songs I like. <laughs> I was also surprised by him playing some shit off of Cadaver. That was the only song I didn't know. That one song. Um. Everything else was like, it was good. It was his hits. It was good. I'm trying to think. He might have performed at least two off of it. He opened with one of them from the cadaver. The one where he's yeah. like, uh, I'm just trying to keep it trip along, trip along, trip along. Gee, that's off of uh, cadaver. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there was another, might have been two others that he performed off of it. And then I hit Shanzi with a hot take, apparently, because I said that I thought cadaver was better than casket factory. So... I'm excited for you to see the thumbnail too for this. Yeah. I basically made it the same as the other thumbnail with the green couch, but we're wearing pumpkin shirts. Love it. Love but it, see, it. I think a lot of people like Casket Factory. That's why. I do too. Oh, and DC found out what Clockwork Orange was today. Yeah, because of the Blockwork Morgue EP that Blaze and Buckshot put out. You had the two album covers, and you would ask me. Which one I liked better, and I said the original because of Clockwork Orange. Yeah. And he kind of like looked at me. I'm like, you you do you have seen Clockwork Orange, right? And you said no. I'm like, well, that's that's probably half the reason you don't like it, because you don't you know you don't see yeah. the symbol the symbolism. Now, and now that I've got that connection, I do like it better. And not only that, but the other one with the toe tag, yeah. it looks too much like Cadaver. Yes, I agree with you on that. That's why I kind of like the other cover. Yeah. Because it matches the inside one. Yeah. And it's like, it all goes together and like, it makes sense to me. Which I had told you this earlier. I feel like they should have called the album Clockwork Morgue because it would have made the connection to Clockwork Orange, but it also Ooh, could have tied into Clockwork yeah. Gray somehow. So there, yeah. there was kind of that as well. Yeah. I wonder why he did that. Maybe it was like a legal reason or something. Maybe. You know what though, for you. For you, since you've never seen it, I would watch yeah. Clockwork Orange with you. We should see if we have it on Max. But I'm only watching it one more time, and that's it for the rest of my life. Uh, let, me, let me look up what <laughs> it's about and see. I mean, you should at least watch it once. That way, you, it, it's a classic. Like, it's like, um, what's that one with the pottery scene? Ghost? Ghost, yeah. Or like, <laughs> I love how all you had to say was pottery <laughs> scene, and it's just like connection. Or like The Notebook or something, like where it's like such a classic that like so many people have seen it. Yeah. Not that they liked it, but that they've seen it. Right. It's one of those. Not a lot of people like Clockwork Orange. I've heard of it, I've just never heard of it. It's a like rare group of people who, who like it. But I feel like you should at least watch it, or try to watch half of it at least, because it's long. Yeah. And see if you, you know, are vibing with it or not. Yeah, well, we'll do that. And then that sure. way when people, like, say something, and too, maybe the album might make references to it That's that you true. don't, you won't catch unless you watch the movie. That's actually probably a good idea. We, I feel like maybe we should watch that movie first, then, before we listen to that album. Yeah, because we got the CD before it even came out on streaming. I'm so excited to listen to it. I can't wait any longer. We go in and play some Minecraft and, and listen to it. I don't want Minecraft today. I gotta go purify and and do stuff to my villagers. I gotta turn okay, into zombies well then tomorrow and purify them. We are playing that album. Okay, that sounds good. I'm getting hit up with all kinds of notifications. Yeah, it's Discord there. So, yeah, it was overall a really good. I really liked Hollow Bleed. It was super intimate, not too crazy, not too busy, but enough crowd to have fun. Yeah. Um, the, just a heads up that venue. The drinks are really overpriced, so bring your own and party in the parking lot. Yeah, we know that for next We're time. We're definitely now. doing that next time. Yeah. Bring a little fucking mini bar, pop up the back of my uh, How car. How much money you can make doing that? 
for real. Take a fucking bottle of it and be like, yo, dollar for a shot. Well, ah. If it was a small shot, yeah, you'd still make money off that. That's true. Well, no, because I would I would want to do it in a way that is cheaper than inside, too. This lady, I love this thing, and then she had the nerve to ask me for a tip. I don't fucking think so. Not. <laughs> Here's okay. my tip. It was Charge a little glass, all right? I asked if they had any kind of flavored vodka, like vanilla, cherry. She's like, um, I don't think so. Let me check. And she said she checked. I don't know if she checked. I got distracted. And she came back and she's like, nope, we don't. I said, okay. I'll just have a Coke with a shot. Just one shot of vodka. I don't want a lot. Just one shot. And she's like, okay. She proceeds to fill this cup, which is like this big, halfway with ice. She put a minimum of two shots of vodka. I'm pretty sure she put more because she was like, and I'm like, oh, that's enough. That's enough. And then it seemed like she put two tablespoons of Diet Coke in there. And I was like, oh, this is going to be strong. It was pretty strong. I seen when we went up there before you ordered, they, someone ordered a Jack and Coke. And I was like, ooh. Eight, I've had a Jack and Coke Eight dollars is what she charged me for that. Yeah. She's like, if you want to leave a tip, just right there. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> no. 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 So next time we know, we'll bring bottles of, of liquor with us. Keep it in the back. And then when people are coming by, be like, hey, dollar for a shot. I mean, I think I should just put some of those little ones down my bra. We'd be good. I mean, look. Oh, hey, we could totally, like, bring some Fago or, like, Coke like, or whatever. Like, I can't fit all that in my bra, okay? But we'll I can just, fit a couple things. Like, would they t could they tell us no? What? To offering drinks to people in the parking lot? You can't sell alcohol legally, no. But you could sell other stuff in the parking lot, yes. Mm. You have to have a liquor license to sell alcohol. Ooh, so we take stickers. But you could sell <laughs> you could sell pop and fago in the parking lot and then say, Hey, wink wink. You want a little in there too? Hey, I got these stickers. They're they only... would have to like pour it themselves and you couldn't you know, do it, yeah. but yeah. I got these stickers for sale, one dollar, and they come with a free shot of whatever you'd like. Yeah, there you go. That'd be your loophole. Yeah, that's how people sell mixtapes, right? Music to me. They're so fucking tired. I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> it's been a long we time. are so fucking tired, but it was a good show. I highly it's recommend great. it. If you are anywhere near Louisville, if they do it again next year, if you can make it, I'd go out for it for sure. It was only like a fifteen dollar ticket price, yeah, and that's so worth it for as many bands that they had. And and uh, I don't know if you caught it, but Buckshot had said that that was their first time doing Hollow Bleed at Headliners, and he said, "What do y'all think of Headliners being a bit of an upgrade, huh?" So my assumption is is he's probably going to try to book it there again next year. That'd be nice. I don't like. Also liked how they had the merch set up too. That was a yeah. good setup. That was exactly how it was when I went for Twisted. In but they probably had ropes up, didn't they? No. No? no it was just and table. people obeyed the line? Yeah. Wow. It was just a table like that. Why can't people do that at ICP shows? And then even the tables where we saw over on the other side by the restrooms were the same way. And there was even one set up upstairs where we went at what? the Twisted show. What, merch? Yeah. I feel bad for the guy who had to carry that shit over. Yeah, well, and what's crazy is, is in December, that was it was hot as hell in there. And when you went upstairs, it was really hot as hell. Yeah. But when we were there last night, it wasn't. It was. It perfect. was cold as hell. It what was it was. Perfect temperature. I was pretty cold, even with the shirt on. As we went over by the door, yeah, it got a little cold. I guess though, at an event like that, I'd rather be cold than hot because you can just like get up and dance more and stuff and then you'll be fine right right oh the bathrooms when we first got there well i don't know what's wrong with people when we first got there the bathrooms were really nice they're clean lots of stalls i was like oh nice love a good bathroom nothing worse than going to a venue and there's two fucking stalls and there's like a line of 15 women you're like shit because then you have this anxiety, like, if you have to go, you better go before you really have to go. <laughs> so, anyways, 
at the end of the night, I think right before Blaze went on, I was like, I'm gonna go back there one more time before Blaze comes on. It was bad. And it was a women's bathroom, so I know the men's bathroom had to be bad. Uh, I... Dude, it was there was it was the whole floor was wet. Everywhere was wet. <laughs> Everything was wet. The Gross. sink was wet, the counter was wet, the floor was wet. I'm like, why is everything wet? Who is peeing on all? And then the smell. And I can't describe it any other way than have you ever smelled someone and not armpit BO, but like down there bad BO? Ugh. Like, have you ever used a bathroom after somebody and it had a really bad down there BO? Wait, just but crotch rot? <laughs> yeah. Crotch rot. <laughs> the whole bathroom smelled like that. Like, you know, have you ever went to, like, a single stall bathroom? Sometimes you go in there like, oh, God. Yeah. It's not poop. It's, like, something else. The like whole bathroom. Ass. I'm like, who the fuck in here has a coochie that stinks that goddamn bad? <laughs> that you pulled your pants down for a five-minute piss and shit, and you stunk up this huge bathroom? I don't want to say it on camera, but I think uh I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe it was her. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Nasty coochie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was literally in the bathroom like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it stinks. <laughs> it was it was one of those uh, things where it's like literally nauseating. Yeah. You know how some people's BO is nauseating too? Like, there was one guy at the venue last Ooh. night. Every time he walked by, and he wasn't even that close. It was like he walked by like that. that. And I was like, God, why guy, do I smell your pit so strong? And we're like, there's four people between us, dude. We have a guy at work that's like that. And he's been talked to multiple times. Still? Mm -hmm. Oh, a different guy? The same guy. What I told you about, he's still there. I thought he got let go. Oh. I thought he's driving for... Oh, no, no, no. no. Diff okay, different guy. He works in dietary. Oh... I remember telling you. He about can't him. have that in dietary. That's kind of a problem. Yeah. And things have been said to him about it. Why don't they let him shower there? I don't know. I said they need to give him a stick of deodorant and put it. Because they have lockers. The kitchen staff have lockers. So like, why don't they put a stick of deodorant and yeah, keep it in the locker? Yeah, she can't do that. There's a procedure they have to go through. Yeah. It's... What they could do is sit him down and like, have a serious conversation and, you know, say. From if I've... it's accessibility reasons, we have they could they have a gym, a gym there, yeah, and showers. They could offer that to him and say, you know, hey, if you would like to use our facilities, and shower here, oh. it's not a problem. We can accommodate that. Yeah, because you don't know his living situation. He could be living in his car. Or, you know. I know he walks to work a lot. So. Maybe he lives with people who he there's like fifteen people in one house. It's hard to even get a shower in. Yeah. So I think that would be the first step is to, to open that up to him. Like, hey, if you want to use the facilities here, that's fine. It, it, obviously, they've already talked to him, right? If, from what I was told, yeah. So I that's what they would bring it. him in and say, hey, we're still getting complaints. We wanted to extend the, the invite for you to use the facility bathroom here if you would like. There's lockers. You are, you know, we could give you your own locker where you could keep deodorant and shampoo and body wash, whatever. <laughs> on, on camera? I'm sorry, I couldn't hold it anymore. It just... <laughs> your duckies hurt? <laughs> <laughs> the itch. God damn. Oh, yeah. shit. What was that you said? Oh. At the show last night? I said my nuts itch, and you thought oh. I kept saying ducks. No, he was like sitting on like a step thing. Yeah. I don't I, think you were sitting back far enough, and you kept saying your your nuts hurt. No, I said I need to stand up because my nuts are falling asleep. Oh, that's what it was. I heard I need to stand up because my ducks are falling asleep. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, some people call their feet puppies. Like they'll say, oh, my puppies hurt. So I'm like, it could be, maybe he means his feet hurt. Maybe his butt is falling asleep. Sometimes that happens when you sit too long. Yeah, so how your butt does it, it was happening to my balls and my And I was penis. like, well, that's kind of weird to call. I've never heard you refer to your feet as ducks. Yeah. So I was like, you're what? And you kept saying it. And I was like, what do you mean you're ducks? And he's like, my nuts. And I'm like, oh. And then I was like, my nuts, my balls. My balls <laughs> yeah. are asleep. Yeah, the people around us were like, 
Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I think they, they should pull them in and say, hey, we're still having complaints. Mm. We want to extend the invitation to use the showers here. We'll give you your own locker. You can keep your shower stuff here. And then if that doesn't work, then they would move on with like maybe a write-up or something and say, hey, man. You gotta wear deodorant. You gotta take a shower. We're, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to keep writing you up. It's all good. It was empty. So it's all good. I take nap here. <laughs> <laughs> I take nap here. Yeah. I say we get some popcorn and another drink refill. No popcorn. Okay. Well, I'm getting a popcorn and drink refill. We try to find that movie. Sounds. And then tomorrow we're listening to the new album, and then DC is gonna drop his review before anybody else does. I don't know about that yet. You should. Wanna, it's not I, even out on streaming I yet. I know, but I gotta listen to it. You know what I mean? I'm not just gonna do a review for the sake of being the first to do it. I want a quality. When did I ever say do it without listening to it? No, My I didn't God, say you man. Didn't. I meant like listen to it like five times tomorrow. I, I didn't say you did. I want to like really listen to it like i want to really listen to it too like five times i'm going to listen to it all this week and potentially review it friday or saturday it's like five songs seven but yeah it could take you a week well that way i could really digest it and listen oh to it. okay listen to you listen linda listen to you listen linda all righty Let's get this shindig started. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah. And have a... Happy well, Halloween. I guess this will be after Halloween, I think. I don't know. Well, I, hopefully you had a happy <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> I don't know, man. My brain's with the schedule and not being home for a few days. I, I'm out of, you know. We would say this. How about... Let's leave with we this. We hope you had a safe Halloween. And Thanksgiving is coming up. I do so I went looking for suggestions for November themed, Thanksgiving themed podcasts. Um, we just, I mean, obviously what we're thankful for, but that's like so played out. I'm kind of like looking for something else. We're going to address as pilgrims. Well, I got that Lewis and Clark exhibit museum we went to. I'm going to do that in November. Okay. So. Alright. Uh, so let's leave off on this note. If you've never been to Hollow Bleed and you're not sure about it, I would say go. It's fun. It's something um, new to experience outside of Hollow Wicked and Fright Fest if you have it. Yes. There were people dressed up there, including the merch guys. Yeah. <laughs> it was Buzz little... Lightyear and, and the, I think, I'm guessing it was his wife, was Woody. Well, we had, I had costume and I was trying to get DC to dress up too. But ultimately, I, most of it was because my head was hurting. But I was like, you know, I've never been there. Yeah. I'm just gonna wait to dress up and, and fill the vibe out first. Yeah, I, I think know. next year if we go, I will probably dress up. Well, look, next year we we talk about making the Hollow Wicked every other thing, every other year thing. They took this year off for Night of the Zooligans. I say next year. I like that idea. Next year we're gonna hit Hollow Bleed. We're gonna hit Night of the oh, Zooligans. That's not what I thought you were. I thought you were insinuating skipping Hollow Bleed and do Night of the Zooligans instead. Uh, we're going to hit Night of the Zooligans, we're going to hit <laughs> Hollow Bleed, we're going to go to Fright Fest, Hollow Wicked, whoa, Unity whoa, Fest. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to hit all of the Halloween events, and then we're going to tell you guys about it. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. So if you would like whoa, whoa, to, whoa, 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 if you would whoa. like to help support that, you can head over to my channel, leave a super thanks on any video. Don't say that. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no, one of these it would be really cool to hit every Halloween event and drop like a major review. Like we went to every Halloween event in the Juggalo world. It, the, you know, yeah. Well, my plan for next year is hopefully Tom Woods float. Oh, he's fine. And I would like to go to Camp Zooligan. And if Night of Zooligans are going on, maybe we could do that instead of Hollow Bleed, or maybe we could do both, just depending. Also, who knows what the gathering lineup's going to look like. Like, there's a lot up in the air. Right. Or we could come out with a weekly live stream show, like a certain somebody who used two years ago, and go to every major event. Okay, oh. we need to end this because I'm getting too, like, yeah. crazy with I my think, words here. Yeah. We'll, we'll end it here. Well, because I had that apple cider earlier, too, so I've had a couple to drink.
How much have you had today, sir? A couple. What's a couple? That's a, whatever I put in that. Which is <laughs> okay, well, one and a half shots. Of each? Yeah, well, no, half shots of each, but it makes one and a half total. If and you then, put if you put a half a shot and a half a shot, that makes one shot. Oh no, I know what I did. The little measuring cup shot glass out there, I put three fourths ounce of each in it. <laughs> the, the math doesn't add up. So it was an ounce and a half, so maybe a shot and a half total. It doesn't add up. I'll show you. <laughs> okay. I like showing my leg and stuff. <laughs> yeah, don't flash the camera, please. Flash. We hope you have a good Halloween and we'll see you next time. Oh, uh, well, sorry. We'll see you next time. Hope you had a wonderful Halloween. Let us know the lighting's better. If not, we're going to make some more adjustments. I feel like as it got darker, it got brighter, so. Timing. Maybe that's the trick. See you next time. Bye. Bye.